All right, so the plan is we'll go over and then we got we got the last lesson to go over. And then I will give you 30 minutes for the quiz. Okay, I was hoping there'd be only two questions, but there's three, but whatever. Yeah, one B. Okay, I hope I hope the problem is not just doing algebra. You know, the key to doing partial fractions is you have to set up the problem correctly. Okay, did everybody set it up like this? A over x plus b over x squared plus c over x minus 1. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Algebra mistake, probably. x plus 1 equal, so if I multiply both sides by the LCD, you get ax times x minus 1 plus b x minus 1 plus c x squared. Check that step because a lot of students mess up on that step somehow. And what, sh what shall we do? Equate the coefficients or heavy side method? Heavy side. I think heavy side is good. So what's a good number to plug in for x? One. One. So you get two equals zero plus zero plus c. You just figure out c is two. What's another good number to plug in for x? Zero. zero. So you get one equals zero plus zero plus negative b. So therefore b is negative one. And then we have to plug in a number. You want to plug in negative one or two? I'm going to go with 2 because some of you have problems with negative numbers. 3 equals 2 times 1a. 2a. Plus b, but we already know b is negative 1. Plus 4c, but we already know c is 2, so isn't that a plus 8? Yeah. So therefore, 2a equals negative 4. Negative 4, therefore a is negative 2. Okay, so this integral is the same as this integral then. Negative 2 over x minus 1 over x squared. Where's c? Where's c? Okay. Plus 2 over x minus 1. Can you guys take it from there? Or do I have to do the last step? No. Okay. 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 2. R is the region bounded by that and that. Okay, so the graph looks something like this. Uh, one half. Okay, again, if you don't know what the graph looks like, just plug in numbers. It looks something like this. Okay. Revolve it about the x-axis. So if I draw the rectangle in, you revolve it about the x-axis. What a surprise, it's a disk. Pi times the radius squared dx. And what is the radius? Top minus bottom. So it's the equation of the function minus zero. Add them up from bring, one half to five halves. Okay, now what happens when you square this thing? This becomes a nine. So the nine pi can throw on the outside, right? And then you're gonna get one over three x minus x squared dx. And of course, that can be factored as x times three minus x, right? Okay, so now we just do partial fractions. One over x, three minus x. Or what's the problem setting it up? Can you guys yeah, take it from there? No, no. No. Equals a over x plus b over three minus x. Multiply both sides by the LCD and you get this. And that's heavy sided. Wait, Mr. Uh -huh. why not? Oh, because you threw the nine on the left. Okay. Yeah, the 9 gets thrown out. It's a constant. You can keep the 9 there if you want. But I'd rather just throw it out. Okay, what's a good number to plug in for x? 3. three. So you get 1 equals 0 plus 3b. We just figured out b is 1 third. What's another good number to plug in for x? 0. 0. So you get 1 equals 3a plus 0. a is 1 third. Okay, so this integral here is 9 pi integral from 1 half to 5 halves. Except when we decompose it, you're going to get 1 third over x plus 1 third over 3 minus x. See, sometimes it comes out to fractions. Now, do you want, you want to take the 1 third and put it outside here with the constant? No. What do you mean no? Why do you want to work with fractions? If I were me, I would take this 1 third and throw it out here, man. 
Okay, so 3 pi times, okay, what's the antiderivative of this? Is it just natural log absolute value of x? Yes. Yes. What about this one? Is that just natural log absolute value of 3 minus x? Yes. No. no. Because the derivative of the box is negative 1, you have to adjust for it. And then from 1 half to, you want me to go one more step? Yeah. Boo. 3 pi, plug in the top number. Natural log of 5 halves minus natural log of 1 half. Now plug in the bottom number. Natural log 1 half minus natural log 5 halves. Everything cancels out 0. No. Nothing cancels out full. So you got 3 pi times 2 ln 5 halves minus 2 ln half. Factor out the 2 and you get 6 pi natural log 5 halves minus natural log 1 half. Natural log 1 half. So the final answer is going to be 6 pi times natural log 5. Say what, girlfriend? <laughs> Why is this equal to natural log 5? Yeah, because natural log m minus natural log n is natural log m over n. The twos cancel out, so you get natural log 5. No, for real, you've got to be able to pick out the answer on the P10. You can do all this work, you can get right here, but if you cannot pick out the answer, say la vie. Okay, and then finally three. Oh my goodness, you get the time. We're in trouble. Okay, take this thing, revolve it, because uh, today's lesson is the hardest lesson of all. Treat substitution. We, we got one more worksheet to do. Tomorrow is the last day I see you, you know. So you can ask whatever questions and then hand it in, hand the four worksheets in. And then, and then, games. And then games. No, then goodbye. <laughs> okay, so take this region. Revolve it about the y-axis now. Now, what does this graph look like from 0 to 2? Uh, this is my guess. It looks like this. There's like a... Wait, where are the vertical asymptotes here? Wait, negative 1 and 3. And the y-intercept is 1. So it looks something like... This is what the graph looks like. Okay. And then from 0 to 2, so if I take this region right here, Revolve it about the y-axis. What a surprise. It's a shell. Label the point x1. What's the formula for the shell again? 2 pi radius, Two pi <laughs> radius height dx. What is the radius? Right there. X. x. The height is simply top minus bottom. So negative 1 over... I'm going to factor it already. x minus 3, x plus 1. And then add it all up from ring, 0 to 2. Can you guys do that then? Okay, this is what I would do if I were me. I would factor out the negative 2 pi like this. And then you just get x over x minus 3, x plus 1, dx. And then you guys can do a partial fractions on that part right there. Okay. Or do I, do I need to go more? Boy, did you try? Yeah. Okay, x over x minus 3, x plus 1 is equal to a over x minus 3 plus b over x plus 1. Multiply both sides by the LCD, and you get this. And then you heavy side it. What's a good number to plug in? Negative 1. Negative 1. So you get negative 1 equals 0 minus 4b. b is 1 4. What's another good number to plug in for x? 3. So you get 3 equals 4a plus 0. So a is 3 fourths. So this integral here is the same thing as, where's a? 3 fourths over x minus 3 plus 1 fourth over x plus 1. Okay, so what's the antiderivative of this? 3 fourths natural log absolute value of x minus 3 plus 1 fourth natural log absolute value of x plus 1 from 0 to 2. And then don't forget to multiply by the negative 2 pi. Can you guys take it from there? 
And do you see why now you need absolute values? Because if you don't put the absolute value, what happens when you plug in 2 there? You get negative 1. What's natural log of negative 1? It's undefined. But when you put the absolute value, the natural log of 1 is 0. That's why you need the absolute value. So why are you putting it? That's exactly why you put it there. All right. Let's do today's lesson. It's natural log of 1. Yeah, natural log 1 is 0. So it cancels out. Well, it's 0. OK, you want me to go one more step? Yeah. Oh, boom. OK, plug in the top number. 3 fourths natural log of 1, which is 0, plus 1 fourth natural log 3, minus, plug in the bottom number, 3 fourths natural log 3. See, 0 minus 3 is no, no such thing as natural log negative 3 plus one-fourth natural log of one, which is zero. It got two zeros out of it. Okay, can you take it from there? I hope so. Okay, we gotta move on. That's because, look, this one no more, this one no more. This minus this is a negative number, right? That's why you times a negative times a negative, you get a positive. So it's pi out of three. Well, whatever the answer says on the bottom. Ah. Okay, we gotta move on. Tricks, this is the toughest of all. Shall I do one of your homework problems for you? Yeah. So you get one less problem to do? Yes. It's the problem, this part, but I wasn't gonna do them anyway. Okay, then you might suffer, on, you might get a... Because I'm gonna score it, you know, as you hand it to me, I'm just gonna score it right there. So this homework will be scored. Ooh. Ooh. Trig substitution. Now, when do you use trig substitution? Now, this is the last resort, okay? Because this is the hardest. You don't want to do trig substitution if you don't have to, okay? But anytime you see these expressions in the integral like that, you see these? That's when you do a trig substitution. For example, let me just give you an example. Oh, yeah, baby. What if you saw a problem like this? Integral square root of 9 plus x squared under x dx. Do I need to do a trick substitution in this problem? Yes. No. That is no. You just do a u substitution, right? Oh, yeah. If you let u equal 9 plus x squared, then du is. 2x dx, and see, you've got the x dx. So, yeah, if you have this, don't, trig substitution is like last resort. You would do a u substitution. However, what if I took that x away? Just like problem number two now today. Huh? Okay, so why don't we just do this problem? So, this is number two, I'll do it for you. Okay. You do a trig substitution. Does everybody understand? If you have an x there, u substitution, easy. But take that x away, this problem becomes tougher. Okay, so how do you do this? What do you do? Well, look at the thing. This is a squared. Okay, this is like 3 squared. Okay, so look at the chart right there. Which, which of the three trick substitutions am I going to use here? The sine one, the tangent, or the secant one? Tangent. Very good. So your trick substitution is going to be you let x equal 3 tangent theta. There's basically three. Why tangent? Sorry. Because look at the, look at the thing right there. Oh. Look. If it's a plus, that's a tangent one. If it's x squared minus something, then it's the secant one. If it's something minus x squared, then that's the sine one. You gotta follow that thing. Now some of you are going, well, why do we do it? You will find out why we do it in the next step. So you just do it, okay? No, then you're gonna see why in the next step, but you gotta, you gotta get there first. Okay, what is dx then? Take the derivative of both sides. Three. What's the derivative of tangent? Secant, Secant squared theta d theta. Remember, because this is actually, remember, this is actually dx over d theta. You're taking the derivative of x with respect to d theta. Because theta is your independent variable. We're just multiplying the d theta on this side. Just like when we do u substitution, right? Yeah. What's u substitution? <laughs> okay, now, take these things and substitute it in here. And hopefully that new integral you get will be doable. Well, let's try. Okay, what do I substitute for the dx here? Right here. 3 
3 secant squared theta d theta. And on the bottom, you got the square root of 9 plus. Now, if this is x, what is x squared? 9. 9 tangent squared theta. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Why is that good? Because look at this. If I factor out the 9, what's left? 1 plus tangent squared theta. Hey, you so bad. That's secant squared. In fact, anytime you make those substitutions, an identity pops up. You so bad. That's why you do it. That's why we need to know identity. Okay, and so the not exactly, that's why you got to know identity. So remember, these are all square root. What's the square root of 9 secant squared theta? Well, 3 absolute value of secant theta. However, did I put a restriction there? Oh, you know why? I have limits there. Wait, how do you get 9 secant squared? Because 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. you got to know your identity. If you don't know your Pythagorean identities, don't get the trick substitution. And then when you square root it, you get 3 absolute value of secant theta. But normally, I'm going to give you a restriction so that you don't have to worry about the absolute value. Anyway, we're A, B, so probably you don't need to worry about it, yeah? And then simplify. The threes cancel out. What is secant squared over secant? Secant. So this whole mess just turns into the integral of secant theta d theta. See, if you make this trick substitution, it simplifies to that. And then now you ask yourself, is that doable? Yes, that's yes. on the list. Ln. Cosine theta. No. Ln. Cosine. Natural log. Absolute, absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta plus c. It's on the list. Look Wait, but there's no no, 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 no. Not yet. I'll put in the limits after. You got you to understand how to do the problem first, then I'll talk about the limits. Okay, does everybody see? This is on the list. Hey, we come back from spring break. Uh, third day back, speed quiz on integrals, you know. Second day back, speed quiz on derivatives. You cannot, these integrals come up all the time on the AP exam. We're going to know these. This is your multiplication table. Can I just box that and that's the answer? No, because if the original problem has x's in it, the answer better have x's in it. So how do I change? Just like u substitution, don't you have to substitute for the u? Same thing here. You got to change it back to x's, except this one's not that easy. So how do I change it back to x's, Mr. Park? This is, I'm going to tell you because we're running short of time. You take this. Isn't this the same thing as saying tangent theta equal x over 3? Just divide the 3. Draw the triangle for that. Okay, draw a right triangle. Here's theta. What is tangent? So katoa. What is tangent? Opposite over adjacent. See, x opposite over adjacent. And then you use the Pythagorean theorem to fill in the hypotenuse. So what would that be? The square root of, using the Pythagorean theorem? 9 plus x squared. Hey, that's the same thing in the thing. Ooh. Okay, so let's finish this up. Natural law, absolute value of? Now look at this picture I drew here. What is secant theta? Well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so what would secant be? Hypotenuse over adjacent. So square root of 9 plus x squared over 3. Plus, now look at this picture. What is tangent theta? Toa. Toa. Opposite over adjacent. x over 3 plus c. And is that the answer? Not quite. Because can't you make a least common denominator? You see what it did? That's amazing. No, 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 we're not done yet. But you look at the answer on the bottom, or this is multiple choice on the AP exam, except this is not a, or, or BC it is, but not for you. You know what the answer is going to be on the bottom? Natural log absolute value of that square root of 9 plus x squared plus x plus c. Whoa, what? Where did the 3 go? Yeah, you tell me. Where did the 3 go? It's a constant. That's why. 
Because remember, what is natural log of A over B? Isn't it natural log A minus natural log B? Oh, and natural log right? But isn't natural log 3 just a number? It's a constant. What happens when you add a number with a number? A you just get another number. It gets absorbed into the constant. Holy cow. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, however, Mr. Park, this problem, okay, so if you don't have limits of integration on it, like problems one, three, and six, you have to draw this triangle here to change it back into axis. But, Mr. Park, this problem had limits. So what do you do? Well, you can go all the way down to here, and then you can just go from zero to three if you want. Plug in the three, plug in the zero, and subtract, right? Or, just like u substitution, what do we do when we make a u substitution? We change the limits. The limits change. So right here, right here, you know this new integral that you get right here? The limits are not going to be 0 to 3 anymore. They change. So how do you figure out what those new limits are? You plug in these numbers for x, not theta, for x. So what happens if I plug in 0 for x there? Maybe you should look at this one instead. Zero. What happens if I plug in 0 for x right there? You get tangent theta equals 0. zero. Yeah. That's 0. OK, what happens when I plug in 3 there or there? <laughs> then you get tangent theta equal 1. Pi over, four. Pi over 4. That's right. Those are the new limits. See, these are the limits for x. These are the limits for theta. So then when you get to this step here, instead of writing the plus c, you go like this, 0 to pi over 4. <laughs> plug in the top number. Let's see if you can do it. Plug in the top number. What's secant of pi over 4? Root 2. Root 2. What is tangent of pi over 4? 1. Now plug in the bottom number. What is the secant of 0? 1. What is the tangent of 0? 0. And then, of course, natural log 1 is 0, so this is your answer. So this would be the answer if there's no limits. If you put limits, then that's the answer. This represents the area, right? Which if there's no limits, you have to put it all in terms of x. Yeah, so if there's no limits, you've got to draw this triangle so you can substitute. See, the key step is right here. Once you get this, you either plug in the new limits or you've got to draw this triangle and then look at the triangle and fill in the thing for secant theta and tangent theta. Now, since we're AB, you know, if, if you got this far, just put the plus C, we're good. But I'm just going to warn you, when you go take second semester calculus, you're going to do all the work, you're going to get that, but you look at the back of the book, this is what's written right there. That's because the natural log 3 is a constant. It gets absorbed into the plus C. Okay, so all I can tell you, just try your best. And then you could probably make me do at least two or three of them tomorrow. Don't expect, don't expect that, that, that Mr. Park, can you do them all? I just copy it down to get 10 out of 10 on the homework. No, we don't have time for that. You guys have got to actually do it, you know. All right. So you guys will have like 32, 32 minutes. The, well, those people that already took the quiz, they, I would say they averaged about 20.